every morning Mary had to get up, where do you think she got her water? It's 15 minutes away. Nazareth did not have a water supply. There was a well, a spring. It was about 15 minutes walk. So there was a dirt path. All the girls in the village had to get up in the morning from these 25 caves, because there was only 25 caves, probably 200, 250 people lived in this village, and they would have to walk. They put a big jug on their head, they put like a towel, and then they'd set the jug on their head, and they would walk 15 minutes to the well to get the water. Do you think the girls liked to do this? No? I think they did. Because back then the girls did not have WhatsApp, SMS, where Facebook. If you wanted to meet your friends and talk to them, where would you meet them? At the well. And by the way, guys, you read the Bible, most of the men found their wives at the well. You'd go there and find the pretty girl, and then you'd get talking to her. Jacob found his wife at a well. Isaac's wife was found at all. Oh, these guys found their wife. Why? Because that's where the women go. They're at the well. And do you think they just fill up their jugs and go home? Are you kidding? They fill up their jugs, and then they talk. You talk about what, the, I used to like this boy, but I don't like him anymore because he just, he's not nice. I like this boy. And they all get talking about their friends and what they're doing. And an hour later, oh, we better get home or mom's going to get mad. So they put their jugs on their head and they go home. I think that people there, the girls loved Mary, not because she looked any different. Her feet were just as dirty as theirs. Flies were buzzing around her head, just like they were the other girls. But I think Mary had a certain joy and a certain helpfulness. I think everybody would have loved her. She didn't show it off. She didn't walk around and say, I'm the Immaculate Conception, bow down. I think she was very humble, very helpful. One day, when she got back to the, from the well, something happened. But first of all, what do you, I like to put Mary in her real context. We think of her always as so beautiful. I'm seeing if there's a statue of Mary here anywhere. No, but you know what the statues of Mary look like. When Ma I've been in Nazareth where it's rained four inches in a day. It's kind of like here sometimes in the, in the wintertime. It rains a lot. And if you are walking down the path to the well, and the path is a dirt path, because they didn't have these nice stones and bricks you have for walkways, and it was just dirt. And if it's the only source of water, what else is walking down that path to get a drink? Camels and goats. And you know, I was raised on a farm, and when they're going walking along, those animals raise their tails up and leave little surprises behind. Plop, plop, plop. <laughs> Nobody comes along behind them with a super duper pooper scooper to clean it up either. So Mary, as she's at the well one day, I imagine it rains. And she's walking back, and this is what it sounded like. <laughs> As she's walking through the mud and the manure. She gets to her house. She takes off her little sandals. It doesn't help much, they're still all between her toes. And she goes in to set the water jug down, and all of a sudden it gets dark in her cave. She says, Mother, something's blocking the entrance to the cave. I'm going to go see what it is. So Mary goes out and she looks, goes out the entrance, and there standing, not standing. Bowing down with his face to the ground is an archangel. Have any of you ever seen an archangel? I don't know if I want to see an archangel. I think they would be so awesome. Many times in the Bible it says that when someone saw an archangel, they fall down in terror as though they're dead. Mary walks out, and I don't think the angel was standing there. We always see pictures of the angel saying, Hello, Mary, how are you today? I don't think so. I think the angel was on, bowed, bowed down with his face to the ground and his wings were down. And he was like that for a good few minutes and then he came up and said, Hail Kahare Tomene. Why was the angel bowing? Because he was a smart angel. He knew someday that little girl was going to be his boss. <laughs> she was going to be the queen of heaven and the queen of the angels. You wouldn't have known it to see her now. All sweaty with flies buzzing around her head, muddy feet from carrying the water, but that angel knew who she was. 
And he said, Hail, Kahare Tomene. He didn't bow down to worship her. He bowed down in honor to her. Just like as if you went to England, you would bow down in honor for the queen. Doesn't mean you're worshiping the queen. It's just a sign of respect. Now, why would this angel be so smart? I think what happened was Lucifer, who was the, the brightest and the most beautiful of all of God's creation, Lucifer, he was so proud of his beauty. He went to his head. And he found out one day that God had planned that all the angels would serve those people down there. Remember, from the heaven's point of view, this is only a speck of dust in the universe. And Lucifer heard that someday he was going to go down and serve those creepy little people who sweat. And they smell. And they can't walk around on legs and they can't even fly. And you think I'm going to go down and serve them? Never! I am Lucifer, the most beautiful of all creation. And God said, if you won't follow my plan and my orders, out with you. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning down to the earth. Once that happened, God called Gabriel and said, Gabriel, will you go down and serve them? Gabriel says, no problem, I'll go. After watching Lucifer, he said, you betcha I'll go. <laughs> Isn't it fun to meditate upon the word of God and to meditate upon these things? Because when you do, it's so rich. There's so many things to think about. It becomes so human. Yes, it's divine. It's the great story of salvation. But yes, Mary is very human. She's not an angel. She's not divine. She is a girl like all of you when you were younger. So, Mary gets this message from the angel. And the angel, the last thing that passage says about the Annunciation, I think it's Luke 138, if I remember right. There's a verse that nobody even notices. You just read right over it. But I think it's one of the most important verses. It shows one of the sorrows of Mary. You think the Annunciation is good news, it's going to make her happy. Yes, it did, because every girl wanted to be the mother of the Messiah. Every girl hoped that she would be the one to bring the Messiah into the earth. So it was a moment of joy to find out, I'm going to be the mother of the Messiah. But it's also a moment of sorrow. Why? Because Mary is not married yet. There's going to come a day when Mary steps out of her cave and she's going to be getting big. And people are going to say, Mary, what happened? You were not living with Joseph yet. What did you do? And they're going to start rumors. And when she walks through the streets, people are going to be pointing at her. She knew when she said, do unto me according to your word, that it was going to bring sorrow into her life. She was going to be the object of rumors and gossip and ridicule. And I, w I think if I was Mary, when the angel came and said, you're going to give birth to a son, she said, how will that be? I don't know a man. And the angel said, it'll be by God. I would have said to the angel, thank you, I'll do it. But would you please tell everyone in Nazareth what you just told me? So they'll know it's not, I wasn't naughty. But then that last verse says, and then the angel left her. Period. What does that mean? Can you imagine being a 15-year-old girl in Nazareth and the angel come and tells you this and then the angel leaves and you're standing there going, oh, how do you process that? How do you, what do you do with that news? I think probably she said, Mom! And went and told her mom. But the angel left her. Mary had to live by faith. The angel did not come back every day to give her updates. There was no WhatsApp. Hello, Mary. This is Tuesday, June 3rd. And today you will have this experience. And we'll be with you. Don't worry. And, the, and the, 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 you'll start getting a little nausea. But none of that. Mary didn't know how this was going to happen. She had to live by faith just like the rest of us did. Wouldn't it be nice if the angel came back every day and sat down at the dinner table and gave her updates? It didn't. Mary had to live by faith. And she didn't understand everything because it says she pondered these things in her heart. And when Jesus was lost at the temple, she said, why did you do this to your father and I? Mary did not know everything. She was a human being. She didn't have insights into everything. She had to live in the darkness by faith just like the rest of us do. 
Now, what happens to Mary at that point? It says that she made haste to visit her relative Elizabeth. It doesn't say cousin, it says relative. She was a kinswoman. So she leaves Nazareth and she did it right away. Probably in a, within a few days, she packed up her few little things and left for, the city is called Ein Kerem. It's outside of Jerusalem. You think that maybe Mary just uh, went to visit a relative Elizabeth. She just kind of pulled over a rickshaw, went across town and visited Elizabeth, right? Do you know how far it was to Elizabeth? 100 miles. It's almost 200 kilometers. How is she going to get there? <laughs> Walking. She couldn't go by herself because it would be too dangerous. 15-year-old girl can't just go walking from Nazareth to Jerusalem. Remember the man that, where the good Samaritan helped him? He was trying to go from Jerusalem to Jericho, got beat up by the robbers. I've been walking through Israel. I've run and walked everywhere through Israel. And I've seen coyotes. I've seen foxes and hyenas, poisonous vipers. And during the time of Mary, there were still bears and lions. Mary would have joined a caravan or her family would have gone in a group together. She couldn't have gone by herself. And she left and walked 100 miles to visit Elizabeth. And she gets there, and Elizabeth says that she, she said, who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And John the Baptist danced in her womb. It said that Mary went into the hill country of Judea, and the whole house was blessed, and she stayed there for three months. Now, how many of you say, aha, that's 2 Samuel chapter 6 in the Old Testament. How many? We got one guy here. I, I, he's been answering all the questions right. If you want to know apologetics things, what's your name? Joel, even name of a prophet. If you want to know apologetics, I got a hunch this guy can help you because he, every time I ask a question, he's answering it. I got a hunch you do too because I talked to you the other day and you're, you got a lot of brain cells connecting too there, I'll tell you. Okay, so Mary arrives, and it says she went to the hill country of Judea. John the Baptist slept in her mother, in the mother's womb. Elizabeth said, who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Everybody in the house was blessed, and Mary stayed for three months. All of that is in 2 Samuel chapter 6. But before I give you the answer to that, I want to go back a little more. Remember when the angel said that the Holy One will overshadow you? Mary said, how will I get pregnant? The Holy One of God will overshadow you. That is interesting because those same words were used in Exodus chapter 40 of the Old Testament. Moses had built the Ark of the Covenant and the tabernacle. And when he stepped back, the tabernacle was there and the Ark of the Covenant, it's a gold box about this big. Not very big. And it had two gold angels on top. You know, God was a little confused. In Exodus chapter 20, he said, make no graven images of anything in the heavens, on the earth, or under the earth. Do not make any graven images to bow down and worship them. And then five chapters later, he tells Moses to make two graven images of angels out of gold and put them on the Ark of the Covenant. Five chapters later, God gets confused and forgot. He told him not to make any images. And he told him to make an image. Anyway, my point is, is that those who say that images are wrong need to study their Bibles a little bit more carefully. Because he also told Moses to make a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And if you look at it, you'll be saved. That also was an image. Anyway, this is called the Ark of the Covenant. And what did Moses put inside the Ark of the Covenant? The Word of God inscribed in stone, manna from the wilderness, and a stick. Proving, you're very good, boy. The uh, stick proving the priesthood of Aaron. But first, when Moses put that Ark of the Covenant there and stepped back and prayed, it said the Shekinah glory of God, the very presence of God in a cloud. It came down, the Holy One overshadowed the Ark. Mary says, how is this going to be? He said, the Holy One will overshadow you. Mary knew her Bible. She knew already she was going to be the Ark of of the new covenant. Not the Ark of the Old Covenant, the Ark of the New Covenant. And Mary, when she is now with child, what is in her? Inside of her womb is not like in the box, the Word of God in stone. In Mary's womb is the Word of God in 
flesh. In the Ark of the Covenant was the manna which came down from wilderness, a little gold urn of it. But in Mary's womb is the word of flesh, the bread of life which comes down from heaven that if you eat of it, you will never die. And in the box of Moses, the old Ark of the Old Covenant, there's a stick proving the priesthood of Aaron. In the New Covenant, in Mary, in the Ark of the New Covenant, is not a stick proving the priesthood, but is the priest in her womb. Why was Mary going to Bethlehem? What was in her womb, the bread of life? What does the name Bethlehem mean? Very good, two, how, two words, Bethlehem, house of bread. Mary is going to the house of bread to deliver the bread. And why did she put him in a manger? How many of you women, the first time you have a baby, you put him into a, a feed dish for sheep? Isn't that a strange thing? The first thing Mary does is wraps him up and puts him in a manger. What is a manger? It's a food dish. The very first moment that Mary has Jesus, she's telling us something. She puts him in a dish where the animals come to eat to tell us that he is going to become our food. When I look at the altar, I don't just see a table of communion and an altar of sacrifice. I now see a manger with baby Jesus in it, giving himself to us for our food. And when she went to Bethlehem, by the way, who were the first ones to be told about the birth of Jesus? Why the shepherds? They were the lowest of all the people. They were considered dirty, filthy people of the land, out with the sheep all the time. Why would the shepherds be the first to know about the birth of Jesus? Because shepherds are always the first ones to know about the birth of a lamb. Jesus is the lamb of God. And of course, shepherds would be the first ones to know that a lamb has been born. Now, we go back to Ein Kerem. Mary is coming there with the word of God in flesh, the bread of life which comes down, and the priest in her womb. And, and Elizabeth, I already told you all the things she said. Now let's go back to 2 Samuel chapter 6. The Ark of the Covenant has been stolen away from Israel by the Philistines. David brings it back. It says he brings the Ark of the Covenant into the hill country of Judea. Where did Mary go? Hill country of Judea. When David brought the ark into the hill country of Judea, it says that he danced in front of the ark. What did John the Baptist do when Mary arrived? Just like David. David said, who am I that the ark of the Lord should come to me? Elizabeth said, who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Do you think that's by chance? It says that where David left the ark for three months in the hills country of Judea, everyone was blessed. Mary stayed for three months, and it said everyone in the house was blessed. Do you think all of that was by chance? Luke understood who and what Mary was. Mary is not just an unimportant little girl who brought God's son into the world and she wasn't special. Luke is telling you that Mary is the ark of the new covenant, bringing the word of God and flesh to the world with a holy one of God overshadowed her. Now one question, Cat Protestants say that Catholics worship Mary. If Mary is the ark of the new covenant, then let's go back to the old covenant. Did the Jews worship the ark of the old covenant? It was only a box. It was a gold box. The purest of gold, which represents the Immaculate Conception, by the way. The purest, purest of gold. But did the Jews worship that box? No. You would have thought so, though, because they would come and bow down to it. Why? Because above the Ark of the Covenant was the Shekinah glory of God. If you wanted to see the presence of God, you would go there and you'd look in the tabernacle and there was the Ark. And what's over the Ark? A billowing cloud. And what is that cloud? It's the very presence of God. It says the glory of God manifested itself in a cloud that was always over the Ark of the Covenant. When the Jews came to worship, they bowed down. But were they bowing down to the box? No, they were bowing down to the glory of God above the box. And Mary is just the box. She's the Ark of the New Covenant. Do we bow down and worship her? No, but we worship the glory of God in her arms. This is a very important distinction to make. 
And you know, in the end of the Bible, at the book of Revelation, in uh, Revelation 11, verse 9, John says, I looked up into the heavens and I saw the tabernacle, and it was opened. And there was the ark of the covenant in heaven. The Jew would say, wait a minute. The Ark of the Covenant was lost in 586 B.C. Over 600 years ago, the Ark of the Covenant, no one has seen it. Not even Indiana Jones can find it. But John saw it in heaven. What did he see in heaven when he saw the tabernacle opened in the Ark of the Covenant? Who is the Ark of the New Covenant? Who did he see when he looked up into heaven? And the very next verse after that, it says, I looked and I saw the Ark of the Covenant in heaven. Behold, I saw the woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. Who is this woman? That's Mary. We're going to get back to that in a minute. I spent way too much time at the visitation. Now Mary goes back to Nazareth. Normally what I would do right now is give a, give a part of the talk called a day in the life of the Holy Family. But a day in the life of the Holy Family... They lived there in the cave together, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. They had to go out to work every day. I know where they went to work. There was a village, a city called Sepphoris, which was a one-hour walk from Nazareth. Because when you lived in Nazareth, if you say you're a carpenter, what does that mean? The Greek word is tekton. It means, doesn't mean somebody that's a carpenter so much as somebody who works with hard material, stone and rock and wood. They were day laborers, rednecks grunts, whatever you want to call them. I don't know what you call people like that in India, but in our place they call them a working stiff. Somebody who goes out and he gets his head all sunburned and he works out all day with big rocks and he comes home with calluses on his hands and cuts and scratches. This is what Jesus and, and Joseph did. They went out over the hill of Nazareth and they went down to a place called Sepphoris because the Romans were building a capital city in Sepphoris and they were drawing skilled and unskilled labor from the whole area to work there and I think Jesus and Joseph went there every day to work and then came back at night. Cana is so important because this is where Mary made a big decision for Jesus. They had run out of wine. They got there and the women in the weddings in the Holy Land, women are in one part and men are in the other, kind of like what you are now. They're separated during the, during the whole feast. And the wedding takes over a week. It's a week for a wedding. Thousands of people come. I went to two weddings in Israel for friends of mine in Nazareth. And each one of them, each family had 500 people. So when you put the bride and the groom together, it's 1,000 people in the family. And they have to feed all of those people and provide wine for them. But at this wedding, they ran out. And Mary... She saw that they ran out, and she was an intercessor for the wedding party. Think about that. What was Mary doing there? She was not only a friend, but an intercessor for the wedding guests. By the way, you're all wedding guests, too, because you've been invited to the wedding of the Lamb in heaven someday. And Mary is the intercessor for all of us as wedding guests, too. But she went and she saw this, so she knew her son was the Son of God. I don't think he'd ever done any miracles yet. We don't know, but I don't think so. And she said, I know what I can do. It's time for this to get started. I've been waiting for this boy to do something for 30 years. He knows exactly what she's asking. She's asking for a miracle, and he knows it because he says, Woman, what does that have to do with you and me? My hour has not yet come. First of all, how many of you say your mother tells you to do something, you call her woman? If I did that to my mother, or she said, Steve, go do this, and I said, listen, woman, she'd go, don't you talk to me like that, I'm your mother. <laughs> but in that biblical times, to say mother is a very honorable title. And then he said, this isn't our problem, Mom. It's their problem. And she, he says, this is not my hour. What hour is he talking about? He means that if I do a miracle like you're asking me to do, everybody's going to see Everything's going to change, Mom. I won't be able to come back to the cave and live with you anymore. I will be now drawn out by my Heavenly Father to go out and minister to the people. Once everybody sees me now as a carpenter, they look at my hands, they see all the calluses. They don't think, of, nobody knows who I am yet, Mom. But when I do a miracle, everyone's going to know my hour is going to arrive and everything is going to change. I won't be able to be with you anymore. So no, it's not yet time for that, Mom. And she said, yes, it is. Do it. Who told Jesus when to begin his earthly ministry, even when he said no? 
You think she's not important in the life of Christ? The Son of God himself says no. Mary said yes, and he obeys her. She didn't even tell him to do it. Like any good Jewish mother, she just says, they've out of wine. Jesus argues with her. She doesn't even talk to him. She walks away. She said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And then she goes right back with the women. What is Jesus going to do? He obeys his mother. And he turns water into wine. Isn't that interesting? Mary was an intercessor for the people at the wedding. Mary is still an intercessor for the people for the upcoming wedding that all of us are going to be a part of. And she had a very powerful relationship with her son.